4th December 2011. It was the day before my birthday. I was travelling by train eager to celebrate my 25th with my parents. My station was nearing when two unknown boys came and snatched my backpack. I was sitting on the lower berth next to the exit door. My leg got stuck in the footboard of the train. I fell down on the track and my leg got stuck and train ran over my leg. I remember few of the fellow passenger put me back into the train as my leg was keep bleeding. A few hours later I was in the hospital. I remember the doctor was asking me to sign a document that was an agreement to amputate my leg. My eyes were pleading for him to save my leg, but the choice was between my life and leg. The, after that, next thought was, it's my birthday. My friends would be trying to call me and I can't talk, take those wishes. My parents were struggling to arrange for a money. The operation would not start until they deposit 1 lakh rupees with the hospital. It was all unbearable pain. It, and all the around it, it was all hazy. And it totally became unreal. The first six months of my recovery were the darkest days of my life. I felt so useless, stuck in a room. I could not go out, could not meet my friends, could not talk to anyone, and worse, could not meet my boyfriend. I felt like life has come to an end, and I had no idea why God has chosen me for this pain. If that was not enough, on one of my hospital visit, when I complained about the intense pain in my leg, it was found that few of the staples were used to seal my skin were not removed and had Im embedded in my leg causing the pain. One of the doctors had the nerve to say that since I did not intend running, it would not be a problem for the future. I was angry and upset, but I did not say anything. As they say, you may forget what people say to you, but you never forget how they make you feel. I did not know then, but I had subconsciously made up my mind to prove him wrong, and I did. When I returned to Hyderabad, I was doubtful if I able to walk again. Then. Someone connected me to Dakshin Rehab, the organization that got my first running blade and artificial leg. This place has encouraged me and taught me the way kids are taught to walk. They made me to run and made me realize that life beyond my accident. The one good thing happened which helped me was meditation. I started to control my thoughts and realize the power this gave me. So people ask me, why do I run? Well, before the accident, I was a person working 9 to 5, a typical corporate life, traveling between home and work like many of you. I was running for money and success in my career. After the accident, my life changed completely. I was the person next door, but slowly I have become somebody who inspires people. Now I have a reason to live my life differently. I run. Running has made me to come out of the comfort zone. Running has made me go getter. And running has connected me to amazing people along this journey. Amputees like me, who have not lost their zest for living. Children who inspire me as much as I inspire them. 
and people from all walks of life who have guts to beat the odds. I run for them as much as I run for my. <laughs> now, I run marathons. I participate in different events across the country. I run for medal. I run for life. But in reality, I run for myself. Sometimes I am a finisher, sometimes I beat my own best timings, but each time I know I am a winner. My wish is to run Boston Marathon someday. As a child, I was not sporty or athletic, so running was totally new to me on many levels. To get to this stage where I'm running half marathons has been demanding very physically. I have to train harder and more often. The socket of the blade rubs against the stump causing injuries. The body tends to take more pressure on the normal side resulting in pain in the leg and back. As an active runner, the blade lasts only for a year after which the shape of the blades get deformed, which causes injuries again. For me, replacing it, it's cost 4 lakh rupees. It's a financial challenge for me. But I do not want to sound like I am complaining. Yes, pain has become part of my life, but I have accepted it wholly. Like I have accepted the missing limb as part of me, I choose to accept the facts, accept my life, accept my loss and move on. When I first decided to start running, it was to prove to myself that I could do it. Failure was scary, but once I overcame it, finished my first two kilometer, my first five, my first 10 and my first half marathon, which is 21 kilometer, I felt confident and alive. When people meet me or interact with me, I am often asked about the accident that took away my limb. They think that's where my story began, but in reality, my story began in a town called Faridabad in Haryana. My parents were born in a village and did not have formal education. They moved to the city for better lifestyle and education for us. They became Srivalas, ironing the clothes for a living, a job they do even today, and earn rupees 6,000 per month. In spite of the hardship, they made sure we went to school and got an education. A village kid sitting under a street lamp, studying and turning her life around is a stereotype. I am that stereotype. In my community, girls are not encouraged me, are encouraged to study. My parents were revolting against old customs and traditions and allowing me to pursue the dream of a higher education and job meant breaking the norm. My education was filled with financial challenges and lack of guidance, but I was lucky to have the blessings of an uncle who helped me because I scored good marks. In college, I was awarded a gold medal for scoring the highest marks in the university, and I was the topper of the university. And in 2009, I got campus placement in Infosys. My childhood proved that we have to struggle to fulfill our dreams and there is no substitute for determination. I have learned that the values you grow up with, the struggles you have seen, 
the pain you have endured make you who you are and nothing can take that away from you i know the importance of what i lost but i choose to accept the facts what happened to me what happened to me can be called by many names some called it fate some destiny others called it bad luck i have made the most of what was given to me that choice was mine one of my biggest support system is my family they never saw me as a victim they were told by others that after the accident my life was worthless the prospects of marriage of a future were considered bleak by others because i was an amputee and on top of that a girl but my father had faith in technology and in the changing times he believed that his daughter would not only walk but also run my parents broke that glass ceiling for me by teaching me that i could do anything if i my put my mind to they told me that you have only lost a body part but your mind is free today i am a runner who has learned to convert the obstacles along the way into advantages i in the end i would say in this world of cutthroat competition if a person like me with one leg can run a race then anyone can you can let us let us come all together cross that finish line come run with me thank you